So this one is dry, but it's been kicked over or something. So, but throw that in water and it'll reconstitute it and it's ready to rock and roll, ready to eat. So no harm. We're just killing it in this batch. They're just everywhere. They're just gonna feast, feast on morels. So now we're getting into some that have been here a while. It has a, a bit of a smell to it. And I found another one. I spotted another one around here very close by. There, right there. So these have been there a while because they've sort of lost their color. And they're sort of getting dry. But this one here, it's pretty far gone, but it'll still eat. These, these might just be um, next year's seed. The spores can repopulate or whatever they do. So a lot of the mushrooms in this batch have been in this kind of drainage ditch and like sticking out of the side of the ditch, you know, which would be kind of representative if, you know, we had spores or something uh, washing down here and then the mycelium kind of stayed in a spot here at this low point and then, you know, fruited out. This is kind of like, seems like it would be that way, you know. Like in this this waterway right here that goes into this bigger creek. Look at this dude here, completely hiding under these leaves. So depending on which way I went, I couldn't see it. I just happened to be at the right level to catch it hiding under there. There's not a lot of dry tender to speak of, but I'm underneath of these cedars and while well, they've got, we've got just tons of, of rain and it came down heavy and hard and fast. So everything's pretty well soaked, but these have been sitting here and they're sort of hanging out in the wind and they're still soaking wet, but they're a little bit drier than everything else that I've got. So I'm hoping that I can grab kind of this loose stuff off of here and try to get it to dry out so it'll be my fire starter. This northern red cedar stuff starts really well, but like everything, it has to be kind of dry. So I'm going to grab some of these little branches too. As they're smaller, it takes them a lot less time to dry out and they burn a lot better, so they'll make pretty good tender.
big thing about when I make a fire, I found that it's a lot easier when you you get tons and tons of tinder ready to go. Just take your time making sure that you've got plenty of tinder ready because if you don't, you start that fire and then you don't have enough and you're running around trying to grab more tinder or more stuff to put on it, it'll burn out. So you wanna have everything pretty well ready so you can alleviate the need to use several matches or lighter fluid or uh, friction fire or whatever it is that you're you're starting your fire with so i'm trying to tear apart this twig this is from the bottom of these cedars but it's been dead a little bit so it's a little drier and i'm peeling off the wet bark on the outside hoping to get to this inner stuff because it is pretty dry inside of here Can break it up and get it in smaller pieces go grab my knife and really slice it up into some small stuff get stuff like this that'll catch really good Some of these leaves that have been sitting in the sun have had just enough time to dry out. So I'm gonna quickly grab them before we get any more rain. Put them crumpled up. And they'll burn pretty well, especially if I can get them a little drier and kind of crumple them up like such. So uh, nesting material like this is really good for starting fires. And this one is empty. Things fairly wet though. So I feel like this is fairly recent. So I'm gonna leave it be today. But if you really, really need fire starter, Usually the birds do a pretty good job of collecting some good stuff for you, but I'm leaving that for them. And I'm gonna gather my own today.
I like these um, Typhoon matches that Zippo makes because you know when it's cold and it's wet you know it's all great to be sort of a wilderness expert and try to start a friction fire and all that but when you're um, trying to be comfortable trying to get a fire started these burn really hot they're waterproof you know they all got this um, waterproof container I can keep my my stuff out of the weather and even if I'm canoeing or something like that these go in the water I know that they're still gonna light And a little bit of salt. Doesn't really take much. These have good flavor. Just slightly coat them with some salt and pepper, really. And the flour I just put on there because that's just the way we've always done it. I'm gonna have some pine needle flavoring in here for sure, whether I like it or not. I guess that's what you get when you hang out underneath of a northern red cedar patch. So I just have some extra virgin olive oil I'm going to add here. It's back going again. Kind of neglected the fire mushrooms ready. I'm going to start getting this oil hot. And we've got a good bed of coal now. So as long as I can get keep feeding wood to it, it should be fine. You can get that nice and hot there. So we're definitely not gonna have enough flour for everybody. But we're gonna get a good taste of it.
starting to smell really, really good now. So, got the next batch cooking here over the fire. Got a really good bed of coals now, so we're really cooking them pretty fast, but got the first dish off, so give us a try. We've I've long since ran out of flour, so I've just been throwing some salt and pepper on them. Mmm. I could definitely have used a little bit more cleaning, but being out here, didn't want to use all the water. So, really, really good. Mmm. You know, I used to always fry morels, you know, in like vegetable oil and um, egg wash and breading. And that's all you could taste kind of is like the egg wash and the breading flavor. But I've since just been really, really basic, you know, just get them wet, soak them for a second, clean them off, throw them in some flour and salt and pepper. That's really all they need. They don't even need that, honestly. You could just cook them up and eat them like this, but <clears throat> a little bit of salt and pepper does really good. So I'm gonna fry up the rest of these and pretty good meal really out here. I've got a good mess to eat, so I'm definitely not gonna be able to eat all of these in one sitting, but I'll throw some um, in the pot, in my bag, that way you know, I'll have something to kind of snack on later. Got my next batch almost done, so I've got my work cut out for me here, getting these all cooked up. Man, that's hard to beat. You know.